Welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg, and well, the weather outside today, it's a little gloomy and it's a little bit rainy, and that's going to be the perfect opportunity to make another video for you on the iCare K1 Pro machine. Welcome back. Let's start by jumping into the Lightburn software right away. The first part of connecting the K1 Pro up to Lightburn software, we're going to be mainly focusing in this area here. And this far right drop down menu, you'll see all the machines that I've ever had connected up to Lightburn software. And we do not have the iCare K1 Pro machine. So I'll start by turning power on the K1 Pro machine. The next thing that I need to do is right here, this will tell me what communication port the machine would be otherwise be trying to connect to the machine. This has to say choose if it says anything else, just pull this menu down and make sure that it is selecting choose. I found if I had anything other than choose, Lightburn software has a hard time auto detecting a new machine. I'm now ready to click on devices. And what I'd like to do is find my laser. I'll click next. And I'll go out and search all the communication ports right now. And it found a machine. I'll click add device. And what would I like to call it? K1 Pro. I'll hit next. And what is the origin of the laser? This is another way of saying when your machine homes, what corner of the machine frame does the machine go to? And on the K1 Pro, that is the front left corner. The next option is auto home your laser on startup. For me, my preference is to always disable this. If I left that enabled, as soon as I turn power on the machine, the machine will automatically home and if I have leftover work materials in there, the head of the laser machine might crash into that. So I don't want that unexpected movement. So I always disable mine. But of course, the preference is always up to you. I like everything I see here and I'll click on next. And here I can see there are some lines of text that are kind of cut off. This is an overview of everything that is on the setup of the machine. And if I grab this corner, of this box, I can open the sub menu up and now I can see here's a summary of what type of software it's using, a serial port USB cable, the label that we're going to call this machine, the K1 Pro of course, and then the size of the work area, 16 inches by 16 inches and that origin of the front left corner, which is of course also where the machine will be going to home. I like the way this looks and I can click finish. Scrolling down, this new machine I just added will be at the bottom of the list, the K1 Pro. This all looks correct, I'll click OK. I can now drop down this menu here and go to the bottom of that list and select K1 Pro. And here the communications port is set to auto, so that's a nice feature. At this time, I've got a bar here saying that the laser is ready. So let's go for it. I'll hit the home button and see if we have motion on the machine already. This is one of the top features that I really like about the Lightburn software. We've just powered on the machine. We connected it to Lightburn software. We have Lightburn software already configured and finding the machine, and we've got movement on the machine in under just a couple of minutes. Setting up the autofocus is pretty quick and easy. I'm going to reference this blue manual, and I'm going to the section on autofocus, and I'm coming down here, and item number three is going to talk about positioning the laser module on the Z axis that, of course, will set the autofocus. And what they're looking for is on that motorized axis, they want a space of about five millimeters to correctly run the autofocus. And I'm going to power down the machine and show you how to set that up. 
I'll start by using the smallest Allen wrench that comes with the machine, and I'm going to loosen up these two set screws on the side of the carriage for the Z axes. I'm going to support the laser module to make sure that it doesn't come smashing down. And I'm going to just let this come all the way down and rest on whatever surface I have here. In this case, it's honeycomb. And now that five millimeters that they're looking for is going to be this distance from the very bottom to the bottom of this carriage piece right here. The nice thing is, is I here does include the setup block that does have a scale across the top. And I'm going to use that scale to set up the five millimeters off the bottom here. And this is the part why I've got the power set off is I'm just going to manually turn this axis and move this carriage down until it's five millimeters off the bottom. And I'm going to make sure too that these set screws are loose enough that I don't accidentally drive the laser module down into the honeycomb. You might see me lifting up the laser module every once in a while. And I'll continue to turn the carriage down until I have that dimension that I need of five millimeters. Here's the five millimeter gap that I have on the bottom and I can now tighten up the two set screws. With the set screws tight, I'm going to manually raise the laser module up off the work area. I'm just gonna pick some random spot in the middle here and that looks good. Now it's worth noting, you need to reset the gap down here anytime that the work surface that you have underneath the machine changes. So if I remove the honeycomb out, I'll need to reset that gap and reset the height of the laser module. And before we jump into Lightburn software, we need to make one setting change on the front display of the machine. On the touch screen, I'll go into setting and I'm going to go into menu number two. And here, the top line autofocus, I'll need to have that enabled. It will tell me when I turn this on, it is going to reset the Z axis, which is perfectly okay. I'll acknowledge that by hitting okay. This is all set and I'll hit back to the main menu. In Lightburn, I deleted the rectangle that I had before and I'm going to need this console tab to set up the autofocus on the machine. And if you do not have that, navigate to the top of Lightburn and click on window and move down. And here will be uh, a tab for console. Mine is already checked. And when I click on console, what we want are these macro buttons. I'm going to select macro zero. I'm going to right click with my mouse and that brings up this sub menu. And this top label here is the button label. I'm going to highlight that, delete it and type in autofocus. Under macro contents, I need to do a open bracket ESP, all in caps, the number 500, and close bracket does need to have everything typed in there just as it would be in the blue manual that comes with the machine. I can click OK. And now we'll see that that macro zero button now turned into autofocus. With the autofocus programmed into Lightburn software, I'm gonna take this scrap piece of wood and place that underneath the laser module and I'm going to test out that autofocus feature. It's noted in the manual of the machine that only use the autofocus feature when you have something that is a smooth flat surface that is very solid. If you're using something like a leather or leather-like material, a fabric, those are too soft and it will not allow the autofocus to work correctly. If you're doing some natural stones that have a curvature to it, again, that is not perfectly flat and the autofocus feature will not work correctly. It's time to test the autofocus button out. I'll click on that. And the first thing that the machine is going to do is it's going to raise the laser module all the way up to the top of its travel, it's going to bump into the limit switch twice at the very top, and then it's going to lower the laser module down to the workpiece and tap that workpiece twice, and then the autofocus sequence will be complete. 
I now know that my K1 Pro laser machine is in perfect focus to the workpiece. Lastly, for those of you who like to use the red crosshairs that are on the side of the laser module to position the starting point of your workpiece, I'll show you how to activate and make sure that that is calibrated in Lightburn software. With a pen, I'm going to put a little ink mark where the red crosshairs are. I am then going to go into Lightburn software and manually activate the laser beam to turn on and I'm going to burn a very light mark into the piece of wood. I'm then going to move the laser module out of the way and simply measure the distance in between and I'm going to enter that into a setup area in Lightburn. I'm going to take a pen and very carefully, I am going to manually put a little ink mark exactly where the crosshairs meet. I'll navigate to the top of the screen to edit and then device settings. And I'm looking for this little checkbox here to enable laser fire button. I'll click okay. And now that appears on the screen. Now when I hit this button, it will manually fire the laser. Right now the laser is not on because the power level is at 0%. And I'm going to increase this to about 5, 6, 7%. And that should be leaving a mark. I'm going to turn that off. And when I move the laser module out of the way, I have the laser mark and I have the ink mark of the red crosshairs. And when I measure that out, I get a distance of 47 millimeters. In Lightburn, I wanna make sure that I reset this power level down to 0.25% or a half a percent. I'll navigate back over to edit, device settings, and I want a laser offset. I'll enable that, and that will enable me to, on the X axis, type in that 47 millimeters that I just measured. I'll click OK. I've had the machine now for just about one or two days, and each time I go out and use the machine, it's been working flawlessly. It's definitely a solid quality piece of equipment. And the statement from Adam Stack that IKEA is their premier high performance machine line, it really is living up to the hype. These new features on the K1 Pro, it's definitely enhancing my enjoyment when I come out to the studio and I work on a laser project. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell that way you know when there's new content like this coming out. Until next time, learn, create, and share.